It's been five years since the Belizean Studies curriculum has been implemented in Belize's schools. Delmer Zib is one of the pioneers to first teach the curriculum. Belizean Studies is trying to incorporate different perspectives on Belize and trying to make students understand that they live in a very diverse society and that there are many issues that plague our country today and that they are socially responsible to come up with changes, to come up with solutions to the many problems that we have today and that we will face in the near future. Uh, so, for example, climate change is one of the issues that is discussed. We also have issues of development, which are actually discussed quite openly in your TV shows, in the in the political debate debates in the House of Representatives, really, those discussions are speaking about development and how we as a Belizean society must be cognizant that these developments must be done with an awareness that they also have consequences for our environment and for our people. I think that specifically as it relates to the discussions of history, there's a lot to be done. There is a lot to be written. Uh, there isn't a lot of information from the perspective of Belizeans that has been written over the years. So, and, and even if it is written, some of the academic discourse is very high and it's not appropriate to the level of, of high school students or primary school students. So if you can contribute in any of those areas, it is important because it is the future of Belize that is in our hands. We, I have to say that here at SGAC, we were embraced. Uh, our headmaster at the time, Ms. Yolanda Gongra, was very open and supportive of our work. Uh, we had a visit. She invited Evan X Hyde from Amandala to come to the campus and discuss because he had in his newspaper advocated and called for for many decades since 1969 the birth of Amandala called for the teaching of indigenous and African history in our curriculum. So I thought that was a special moment. Uh, but I have to say that in terms of resistance, uh, I would want to say that even to this day, there is still not a full embrace of this idea. At the national level, it will be a constant advocacy that needs to continue because every year uh, you can't expect if voice is not given to these ideas, you can't expect them, these ideas to just uh, have a part onto itself. There has been a long history before that has rejected and cancelled out this kind of uh, teaching. And while Mr. Musa understands those challenges, there are other schools of thought that say the Belizean Studies curriculum doesn't go far enough, and even claim that the curriculum's goal of aiding in the process of decolonization is impossible to do from within the church and state system that still runs many of Belize's schools. Still, we asked Musa what, in his view, has been the impact of the information imparted to students through this curriculum. I would say that it deepens their sense of identity. It deepens their sense of who they are. It is an empowering feeling to see young people learn about who they are and who their ancestors were and what their ancestors contributed to their current place. But I'd want to go further than that. There is a big push, which I, I support fully uh, right now, called the competency-based learning experience. And that involves things like collaboration. So when we teach history, it's not just the content, but it's how do you do it? You, you do it through collaborative experience where they learn together. It's not individualized learning. You teach through digital literacy, you build, develop a website, uh, you allow them to make videos and slideshows and things of a digital nature that they are familiar with. And things like emotional intelligence, tapping into their critical thinking, all of those things combined would bring out uh, what is called competency. It's competency that the curriculum has designed to build from the ground up in a way that doesn't just spring history lessons on unsuspecting college freshmen, because history would have been a core subject and a fundamental building block of their identity all throughout their education. Well, I would hope that the first generation that comes into tertiary level education and sits in a Belizean history classroom engages 
like really and truly engages and appreciates that level of understanding of Belizean history and Belizean studies, because that is that is something that we lack. Um, the basic flow of Maya history into independence or, or Guatemala Belize territorial claim dispute. Um, I don't think 16 weeks at a tertiary level institution is enough to encompass all of that. And so I would hope that when the student does come and sits in that classroom, they already, they could answer questions, they are engaged in the information, they know, and they can actively participate in what else they don't understand, you know, and they ask these questions that are, are relatable to, to them as, as Belizeans, because that's, that's lacking. When you ask a student what they understand about the um, labor's uh, union movement, uh, when we ask about things like Antonio Sobranes, when we ask about um, how logwood and mahogany became the foundations of our economic society, those are things that we take for granted now in this in this day and age, and they're the foundations and the pillars of what makes Belize Belize. So it would be great if they would come into the classroom and they would actively understand and um, feel proud as Belizeans. And moving forward, these educators say that the Belizean Studies curriculum and the way students interact with it is under new technological threats, ones that will have to be tackled by teams of professionals fighting against misinformation with facts. I'll give you an example. The 1919, what we call revolution or riots in Belize tongue at the time, that saw 200 plus ex-servicemen, along with almost 3,000 citizens of Belize Tong, which was only a tongue of 15,000 at the time, rise up in rebellion against the oppressive uh, British regime of how they were treating the soldiers. If you put, which I have done, that narrative into ChatGPT, it will give you some information, but it it is it is very lacking and it makes up a lot of uh, bad false information about it. The little that I know, I could tell immediately that that is uh, not factual, right? So I think that going forward, one of the biggest challenges we face, and it is, an, it is something we should embrace, is how to continue to develop content by those who are invested in this important information. You don't, we can't expect that the content will just come somebody's gonna drop the content for us from the sky. Mm -hmm. We have to develop the content. Along with the content, there will have to be training of teachers, of the new generation of teachers. And along with the gener new generation will come, the, to me, the heightened participation of technology and other things that we would like to see in the classroom of the future. Sherry's Halsall, 7 News.